Hello everyone, and welcome back to another RuneScape video. As you can guess by the title, I will be discussing 5 features that Jagex has removed from RuneScape. This list is a combination of both Old School RuneScape and RS3. This means if it still exists in Old School RuneScape, it won't be featured here, so don't expect to see anything like Random Events or Tutorial Island. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Number 5, Last Logged In. This one does have a pretty solid reason as to why it was removed, but I do occasionally miss this feature. Previously, when logging into RuneScape, you would be able to see what time and what IP address was used to log into your character last time. This was a nice feature as for determining if your account was hacked and sometimes who did it. To be honest though, it wasn't too helpful. Most of the time we would just rush past this page without even looking at it. Not to mention if you got hacked, you should be able to find out fairly quickly when half of your bank is missing. Anyway, as to why this feature was removed, Jagex decided to remove this feature due to the fact that RuneScape live streamers would oftentimes accidentally leak their IP while streaming. This caused a whole mess of issues with streamers getting DDoSed and booted offline and in the middle of their streams. Most of the time it wasn't even the streamers fault as well, sometimes they would lose connection to the game servers and would be booted back to the lobby while trying to reconnect. It's probably for the best that this feature was removed. Number 4, Bestiary. The Bestiary was one of my favorite parts of the RuneScape website until it was removed in November of 2015. The bestiary was a part of the website written in HTML that allowed you to view many of RuneScape's monsters and characters. You could see these 3D models in multiple different poses, such as walking, attacking, and others. Although it didn't serve too much of a purpose, it was cool to look at. When the bestiary was first released, a few unreleased monsters were available to view. Some examples of these are the Holy Defender and a Level 0 Warrior. It also leaked a monster that was later added into the game. This monster is known as the Stone Clone and is one of Virago's minions. Anyway, the bestiary was eventually removed along with the HTML5 client. I think it was more sad to see the HTML5 client go as I filmed many of my early intros using it. The client itself was almost impossible to actually play with, but it was great for still pictures and videos. Number 3, Rune Labs. Although I never personally used this feature, it was still really cool and was nice to have back when it was around. For those of you who don't know what Rune Labs is, it was a section on the RuneScape website where players could suggest ideas as well as vote on others' ideas. Every month, Jagex would switch what they wanted players to suggest. Rune Labs first released way back in early 2015 and existed until May of 2016. Quite a few updates actually came to the game as a result of this program. A few notable ones are the Adamant and Rune Dragons, Waterfall Fishing, and even the Ark. Things were going well, it seemed, but each month less and less players participated. As a result, Jagex decided to close Rune Labs, but has decided they may reopen it for certain occasions. It's a real shame this one had to be removed, as the concept is really cool. So many people have come up with great ideas that would fit really well into RuneScape, so it's sad we'll never see most of them come to life. Number 2, Instant Demo. Most of you probably don't remember this ever existed, but it's a really interesting part of RuneScape's history. Back in March of 2010, Jagex decided to introduce the Instant Demo game mode. Basically, what it allowed you to do was get a taste of RuneScape without having to sign up for an actual account. Players had access to 10 quests, a limited chunk of the free-to-play world, and roughly 10 hours of content. Players with demo accounts were unable to chat and played on World 901. What I find really interesting is according to the wiki, your player's progress was saved to your computer. This means that instead of your account being saved on Jagex's servers, it was saved locally on your computer. Anyway, a few other restrictions where players couldn't take part in holiday events, the Grand Exchange was disabled, there was a wealth cap of 200k, and they only had 34 bank slots available. Luckily, players were able to upgrade to a free-to-play account at any time. I can understand why Jagex removed this feature, but it also sounds pretty cool. It sounds nice to not have to fully commit to a game and just have a fun little demo before actually trying the full thing. I could imagine demo mode was very useful back in the day when Miniclip was popular. RuneScape was featured there, and it was how many players discovered the game. Number 1, Gnome Copter Tours. These are one of my favorite features that Jagex has removed from RuneScape. Gnome Copters were released in March of 2008 and were used to show off many members only areas of the world to free to play users. You could see areas such as Castle Wars, Pest Control, the Birthorp Games Room, and a few other places. When you toured these areas, you were not actually in a member's world, nor were there actual places. They were just simulations. Inside the simulations, Jagex also programmed dozens of NPCs to look just like players. They could do things such as run, fight, and even say things in chat. 
Anyway, while you were in the air, most menus and interfaces were disabled. Although, you did have the option to talk to other players nearby, as well as speed up your gnome copter by using the run button. Very quickly after the release of these tours, players found quite a few bugs to exploit. One of the major ones was while in PvP worlds, you could fight other players in gnome copters. Another one was that you could get the Ceridoman and Zamorak cloaks from Castle Wars, as well as bandages, and use them in free-to-play worlds. A side effect of this glitch also allowed players to fly without using a gnome copter. Anyway, a combination of all these glitches, as well as quite a few others, eventually caused Jagex to just close the tours altogether.